In this video, we're going to continue on with the example that we did in the previous video, where we determined the currents I1, I2, and I3 to be these values. Now what I'd like to do is show how we can calculate the power in each of these different devices and show that the sum of the powers must equal zero, or saying it a different way, that the power put into the circuit must equal the power dissipated from the circuit or observed by absorbed by the resistors. Now, just a couple of uh, reminders. First of all, P is equal to I times V if the current and the voltage are referenced so that the current is flowing into the positive terminal and out the negative terminal. So P is positive I times V if it's referenced this way, this way, plus V. On the other hand, P is equal to negative I times V if the current is referenced into the negative terminal and out the positive terminal. Sometimes this convention here is suggesting a source because in sources which put power into the system, current leaves the positive terminal and enters the negative terminal. This is a load convention, because in a load, the current flows from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. And let's also remind ourselves that in a resistor, power in a resistor is equal to I times V, but it's also equal to I squared times R, and it's also equal to V squared over R. These two forms can be uh, deduced from our basic definition of I times V, here by replacing V with um, I times R, Ohm's law, and in this form here, replacing I with V over R, again, combining the power definition or the power defining equation with Ohm's law. So let's go ahead and calculate the power for each of these different devices. First, let's calculate the power associated with a 10 volt DC source. We'll call that power ten, P sub 10 V for 10 volts. Now you'll notice that I1 is referenced into the negative terminal and out the positive terminal. So P sub 10 V is going to equal negative I1 times the 10 volts. Using this value of I1, we get then that P is equal to negative 0.175 times 10 or equal to a negative 1.75 watts. The power associated with a 10 ohm resistor, let's call that P sub 10 ohms, is going to equal I squared times R. Well, the I associated with this is I2, so it will be positive I2 squared. Now, why is it positive? Because, well, <laughs> turns out it doesn't matter because I2 is going to be squared. Um, so let's just leave it at that. So I2 squared times R of 10, which is equal to I2 is 0.125 squared times 10. And that equals 0.15625 watts. The power associated with a 50 ohm resistor, P sub 50 ohms, is going to equal, now the current associated with that is I1, so that will be I1 squared times the 50 ohms. Well, I1 was 0 0.175 times 50 is equal to 1.5. 53125 to carry along a few significant digits that we probably don't have. And finally, P sub 25 ohms is equal to the current flowing through the 25 ohm resistor is I3. I3 squared times 25. I3 we found to be 0 0.05 square it times 25 and that equals 0 0.0625 watts. Alrighty, these three 
powers are associated with the resistive loads. They're all positive. The sum of those has got to equal negative 1.75 watts. Get out your calculator and you add those up and you find out that this does total a positive 0.1 or 1.75 watts. And sure enough, the positive power and the negative power are equal but opposite, uh, obviously opposite in sign.